This image has been floating around the web for a while. What it does is it lists a whole bunch of alternatives for Adobe software on an app-by-app -app basis. Super helpful and really thorough. And I have opinions. While many of the apps on this list are good, most of them are, some of them only fill one section of what Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop may have done. While others are more of a complete package that try to replicate the entire experience of an app. And what you might need is gonna vary from person to person. So let's break it down. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And this image was created by someone named X Daniel Art, who's a graphic designer in Spain. I'll link the original down below his Twitter post. I love this and I, I wanna really go through it piece by piece and talk about my favorite pieces of software to use on this list. Now, I do wanna throw a disclaimer on this. I've used most of these pieces of software, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, even Adobe like XD, Premiere Pro, After Effects, I've used these, but there are some pieces of software I have used less. I've never touched Adobe Audition. Uh, so I'm going off of research that I've done based on what apps might be a good replacement for that. And when I get to some of those categories where maybe I have less experience, I'll let you know. So if there's other YouTubers who do have a ton of experience in that area, they may be talking more from personal experience than I am. They they might be better resources for this stuff. Cool? Cool. Start with photography. Okay, we have the Photoshop section open here, and my favorite Photoshop alternative, at least for photography, editing some graphic design and that sort of thing, is definitely Affinity Photo. On their website, they call it the photo editor you've been dreaming of, and, and basically it takes a lot of Photoshop's most popular features and it replicates them, down to many of the Photoshop brushes and things like that. In fact, you can import brushes into this the way you can import brushes into Photoshop. Oftentimes, using the exact same brushes as well. But photo really is designed for photography in mind, hence the name. And right now, all of Affinity software is 50% off. It's a one-time purchase. Every few years, they release a new version. I think about two years ago, they released version two. And that is a paid upgrade, but for the most part, it's a one-time purchase. You own it forever sort of thing. So you can buy it for Mac OS, Windows, or the iPad, or you can get the entire Affinity library. Currently, it's only 82 bucks. That's not bad because you're getting Affinity Photo, you're getting Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. Those two we'll be talking about in a minute here. If you're looking for something for free, what I would check out on this list is Photopea or Photop. Let's go with Photop. Now this is a web-based version of Photoshop. They've copied a lot of Photoshop's interface. A lot of this is gonna look really familiar to you if you've never used it before. As you can see on the right-hand side, there are ads, but over here on the left-hand side, you have the same tools, almost the same icons. On the right-hand side, you get your layers, your history. A lot of the palettes are in the same place. They look the same. Um, this is web-based, so it's not quite as fast as Snappy, um, but it's still really shockingly good and it's free. So if you just need to jump in and open a Photoshop file once in a while, this is a good thing to check out and just see if it fits your needs before you jump into something more expensive. Another thing on this free list is, is GIMP. Now I have, uh, I have bad talked GIMP for a long time. A lot of people love GIMP. It's an open source software, extraordinarily well known. My biggest problem with GIMP is I don't really like the workflow and how the tools are laid out and that sort of thing. And it's super, super slow especially on the Mac. But it is free and a lot of people love it. And for the most part, it does replicate many of the features or the most common features that you're used to seeing in Photoshop. Since it's free, it's hard to not recommend it. So if you are looking for something open source that runs on the desktop, it might be worth at least checking out. Quick shout out, I've got two courses, Learn to Draw in 60 Days and Intro to Digital Art over at bradsartschool.com. Check those out if you're just jumping into digital art or wanting to learn more about drawing. Back to the video. Some of these others I haven't used quite as much. For example, paint.net, I wasn't really a fan of that. Um, some of the others I haven't used. I have used Pixelmator Pro, which is available on iOS and it's available on the Mac. It's not available for Windows. That's a really good Photoshop clone as well. But overall, Affinity Photo is, is my choice in this category. Now then there's the painting section. This is something that I talk a lot about in these videos. So if you've been around for a while, you know I love Clip Studio Paint. This is a one-time purchase. I should put an asterisk by that. Their, their purchasing options have gotten a little bit more convoluted, but this is, they do have an option where you can purchase it and own it forever. You'll only get security updates doing that. You won't get updates going forward. If you want all the updates as they happen, there is a very affordable subscription available for this as well. This is also available on Mac, Windows. It's available on Android. It's my favorite thing to draw on an Android and it's available on iOS as well. Fantastic for drawing comics and line work and art and, and that sort of thing. I love it. Another thing that's on this list that I really like is Procreate. If you 
you've been around here for a while, you've heard me talk about Procreate quite a bit. That's iPad only though, but if you are on an iPad, it's fairly inexpensive. It is a one-time purchase. It's a wonderful app to draw in. And then there's Krita. Now I'm mentioning Krita here because it's open source, so it's totally free. You can find it in some places to buy. For example, I think they charge for it on the Steam store or somewhere they charge for it. Might be the Windows store, but if you just go to Krita.org, you can download it for free. And it's fantastic. It has all the brushes that you would ever need to make any art. It's, it's a fully featured professional drawing application, even has some animation features in there. I recommend this a lot for beginners who are just getting into digital art, who maybe don't want to invest in a lot of money in this hobby yet, but want all of those features and want to experiment. Not only that, but here on YouTube, there's a ton of videos that'll teach you how to use Krita. So if you're getting used to the interface, I find it's not quite as snappy and fast and responsive as some of the other apps I like on this list, but for free software, it is fantastic. It's also on Android. I find the Android version gets a little cluttered because there's a lot of like interface elements and stuff like that around. So the area that you have to paint in is kind of small, but again, it's free and fully featured. Ibis Paint X is also on this list. That's something that I have used not a ton, but I tend to test it out a lot on Android and iOS devices when I'm playing with them. It's got some really cool inking tools. It is free, but also ad supported. So you can pay a small fee to make the ads go away forever. But also if you just want to watch an ad, it'll open up a lot of the features. I think every 16 hours or so they reset. That's another drawing app that's worth checking out just because some of the pens are really nice, especially if you're into comics and inking and that sort of thing. What else is on this list that's worth mentioning? A lot of people like Paint Tool Sci. I, I find that to be a little bit more old school for my taste. Sketchbook, I have not checked out in a while. They had a change of ownership. Fire Alpaca and Medibang are open source. Medibang, I'm not sure. They're built on the same kind of open source engine. I would prefer going with something like Krita myself, but they're also free, so it might be worth checking out. My Paint's another free one. I didn't care for that quite as much as Krita, but anyway, we should move on from painting. I could talk about painting all day. So let's talk about Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna go right back to Affinity again and talk about Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is one of my all-time favorite apps. One of the cool things about it is it's got different personas. So if you're in the drawing persona, it works kind of like Photoshop where you have all your pixel brushes and things like that. But then there's also a um, vector persona in there too. So you can click on that and now you have vector shapes and vector brushes and vector stuff. It's not only a fantastic alternative to Adobe Illustrator, but it's just a fantastic program altogether because you could do your sketching in there and then do your vectors on top of that on a different layer. I love this program. I'm, I'm currently building my comic in this program. I like it so much. A lot of people do think of this as just a vector program, but it's a vector and painting program. So there's a lot of cool stuff that this can do and totally worth checking out. It's got a decent price tag on it. Highly, highly recommend this application. Also on this list is Inkscape. Now Inkscape is something that I, a lot of people have told me I really need to dive into here because this is an open source vector alternative to Illustrator. Very popular, a lot of tutorials online. I've used it a little bit, um, but since I'm so used to Affinity Designer, I tend to kind of fall back on that one because I have it. I should really do a deep dive into Inkscape because a little I have used it is pretty impressive and I've seen people create great stuff in this app. Open source, free, good reviews might be worth checking out. So neither Inkscape or Affinity Designer have a live trace feature. It's interesting that that's called out here on this list. So it also mentions Vector Magic, which is uh, it basically what live trace is, is it can take a bitmap image, you import it into Illustrator and it can turn it into a vector image. There's all sorts of settings and things like that. Oftentimes if it's a lower res bitmap, it does some weird things. But anyway, a lot of people do rely on that feature in Illustrator. So if you need it in another program, Vector Magic might be able to help you out. Next, let's take a look at Adobe Animate. Now, this one is a little interesting because there's there's nothing quite like it. There are some that can do really high-end animations, uh, applications like Moho, Toon Boom, Harmony. These are fantastic. They're also very expensive. These are used by professional studios to do professional level animation. And, and in many ways, these two applications are like higher end that Adobe animate based on what they can do. I don't have a ton of experience with these apps, but I know since they are used by professional animation studios, they come highly recommended as well. Another thing that's on this list is Blender. Blender can do animations. Blender can do a lot of amazing things. I love me some Blender. Blender's gonna show up a few times on a few of these different lists because it does do some of these things. However, it's a very different application. It's free, it's worth checking out, but Blender, I think of Blender, 
primarily as a 3D rendering model animation app that just happens to be really good at animation, just happens to be good at some of these other things. Some of the other things on this list that I have played with a little bit, like I think OpenTunes, Open Tunes is open source, uh, so it is free. It might be worth checking out. Um, when I've played with it, it's more of a frame by frame animation tool. It doesn't, I, I personally think of this as a very different application than Adobe Animate, even though the end result is you're animating with something, the way you get there is very, very different in these applications. It's kind of cool that he throws on some honorable mentions here, like uh, Critter, Critta, Fire Alpaca, and those sort of things, because those do have some animation features in them as well. I'd also also throw Clip Studio Paint in here. It's got an animation timeline too. Yeah, so that's Adobe Animate. It's hard to find anything that's exactly like Adobe Animate. It's kind of unique in this space, uh, but there are definitely applications out there. What about InDesign? I'm just gonna go straight here to Affinity Publisher. Affinity Publisher is basically, I wouldn't call it a copy of InDesign, but it's basically doing the same thing. It's built for graphic design layouts and that sort of thing, basically designing for print. It's Affinity's version of InDesign, and it's part of the entire suite. This is where I would look. Also on that list is Quark Express. Now, I have not, I, I started my career using Quark Express like 20 years ago, and uh, I, I should give it another shot, but I just don't do a lot of publication design, so I don't know if I'd give it a fair shake at the time. I did not like uh, Quark Express. But again, that was 20 years ago. A lot, a lot has changed in software in 20 years. And the open source version here is Scribus. I've never used that. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think if you've ever tried it. Is it on par with InDesign? All right, our next one is Adobe Substance. This is the first one where I have very little, actually, no, what, I'll say it. I've never touched this application. So this one's a little tough for me. I have heard some good things about Quixel Mixer. Uh, Material Maker is obviously the open source alternative. Might be worth checking that out first. Armor Paint 3D Coat, that sort of thing. Again, probably worth checking out somebody else's recommendation before you jump in and actually spend any money here. Lightroom is another one of those things that I've never used, but I've heard a lot of good things about this on one. And I've also heard good things about Capture One. On one is known for its speed and all the features that allow you to crop things and change color and modify your photos and take care of your photos that way. So that might be one that's worth checking out if you're kind of into this space. And Capture One is doing similar things with your ability to go in there and do some like more color correction, photo editing type stuff stuff as opposed to like some of that hardcore photo editing that you're used to in Photoshop. All right, let's talk Adobe XD. I have only used Adobe XD a little bit, but my former life, I was an experienced designer, a UX designer, so I've used some of the competitors quite a bit. I use Sketch a ton back in the day. Actually, when I started my job, we were using Photoshop for all the layouts. Occasionally, you'd find people who were using an app called Fireworks, which was an app that Adobe purchased when they got Macromedia and then they abandoned a few years later to much people's dismay. I really enjoyed using Sketch back in the day. It had a lot of interface elements and I found it super easy to use and duplicate pages and make different modifications to the pages and it had a lot of great stuff. And right when I was getting to the end of my career as a UX designer before I kind of jumped feet first into this YouTube thing, another application came along that kind of took over the user experience design world and that is Figma. Everybody I know in this space is now using Figma. Everybody has shifted over. They say great things about it. It has some great collaboration tools. You could do a lot of the same stuff. It's all online. In fact, this was one of those areas where Adobe XD never really got a ton of traction because Sketch and Figma were just eating their lunch. And a few years ago, maybe two years ago, Adobe tried to buy Figma and failed. So it's still around. It's still the industry leading you know, software solution. If you're in this space, you're probably already using it. I was curious about the open source stuff in this area. This is called PenPot, uh, and it's like an open source version of some of these applications interface design. It looks pretty cool. Like they've got a lot of like features and stuff going on here. It looks super slick. Their website looks nice. Looks like there's some design code collaboration stuff that you could do. This looks really interesting to me. So if you are just kind of diving in and you need something for free, this might be worth checking out. Here we are, we're talking about Adobe Audition. Now I've said at the top, I've never used Adobe Audition, which is not totally true. I used it once because someone had me on their podcast. They had me boot up Adobe Audition to record my audio. I know a lot of people in this space who use Audacity, which it looks here that's crossed out. Have they changed their name to Tenacity? Google sucks nowadays, they're not telling me. But Audacity still has a website. They're still around. 
doing sound editing might be worth checking out. This is also the first appearance of some DaVinci software here. We have DaVinci Fairlight. You're going to be hearing me mention DaVinci's name several times in the next couple of categories. That's another one that has a paid option, but also has a free version of the software, um, which still has a fair amount of features. So if you're kind of looking to go the free route, that might be something that will look, that's worth looking into. Oh yeah, Cakewalk. I've heard of Cakewalk too. And of course there's GarageBand if you have a Mac that's already pre-installed. Logic Pro's on here. That's big story studio software type stuff. Yeah, so that's that's Adobe Audition. So let's move over to Premiere. I spend a very large portion of my life nowadays editing video in Premiere. I have tried to replace Premiere in my iPad Pro video. I tried using uh, Final Cut Pro for the iPad. That didn't go so well. It was just a learning curve. It's a great piece of software. I, it was just a lot to learn all at once. But if you are on a Mac, checking out Final Cut Pro might not be a bad way to go. I know a lot of influencers uh, use it, but it's incredibly popular in the Mac space. A lot of people talk about it. Obviously can get the job done. And there's an iPad app version now. Now this is one that's been making a lot of waves in the creator community in recent years, and this is DaVinci Resolve. Now this has a free version that has almost all of the features, or at least a ton of features packed in the free version. There's also a paid version. So if you want support and that sort of thing, that's available to you as well. And I guess the color correction on DaVinci is fantastic. It's used by a lot of studios, very professional level software and a true alternative to Premiere that's out there. I think if I was going to break away fully from Adobe, this is probably where I would look first. Kind of lumped this next category altogether. We have Acrobat, uh, Bridge, Dreamweaver. Now Acrobat is, is Acrobat. And there are some online PDF makers out there like PDF Exchange if you need to make it. Also, a lot of apps just have PDF features baked in so you could like export from Google Docs as a PDF. So it really depends on what you're looking to do. Then there's Adobe Bridge. I have always hated Adobe Bridge. Very easy to accidentally open it up way back in the day. Uh, it was basically file management software but was big and heavy and slowed down your computer so I never used it. But look, XN View MP appears to be a, a decent alternative. And then there's Dreamweaver. Back in the days when I was a web designer slash UX designer, like everybody hated on Dreamweaver. I used Coda. That's not on this list. There's a billion other ones out there now. It's kind of weird because web design has changed so much that if you're building a website, I would recommend using something like Squarespace or WordPress or that sort of thing instead of writing like code on your own, like, like Dreamweaver does. But there are some options listed here. I have never heard of any of these. It just seems like the world of web design has moved so far past Dreamweaver in the last decade or so. All right, we're ending here with After Effects. It's interesting that Blender is on this list again. This is an area where Blender could do a lot of things that After Effects can do, but I would not consider Blender an After Effects alternative. I have heard really good things about HitFilm. Now, I, as I understand it, HitFilm does a few things. One, you can do all of your video editing in there, but also it has a lot of effects and extra things that you could dive into and play with, similar to what After Effects does. But I don't think it goes as deep as After Effects. We're going to go back into the DaVinci world. This is uh, Fusion. Um, this is similar to DaVinci. There is a free version and also a paid version of this. And this is some hardcore software. This honestly scares me a little bit when I've looked into it. It looks very intimidating. It looks like it uh, it's going to have a learning curve. It can do a lot of things, um, but sh you're going to have to learn it. You're going to really have to dedicate yourself here. Whereas HitFill might be great for making little graphics to stick in videos for the kind of stuff that I do, this seems like it's geared more towards the professional effects level of people who really want the kind of hardcore solution that After Effects provided. Yeah, so this is the 2024 version of this list. Thank you, X Daniel Art, for compiling this and giving us something to talk about today. A lot of fantastic recommendations on this. Where are your go-tos? Where do you differ from me? What are some apps that I may have like skimmed over here that you think are awesome or worth checking out and spending more time with, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.